Hello everyone, I'm Trucker Al from Rochester, New York, and when I'm not driving, I'm watching Trucker Josh on TJV, and you should too. Be safe out there. What you see out there, Diesel? What you see? What's going on out there? You hear that? What is it? Morning everybody, how you doing? It is another new day. And today I am filming this on a, a Wednesday. Not sure when you're watching this, but happy Wednesday to you anyway. So today the plan is to get as close to our delivery as possible. We're not gonna make it by three o'clock, which is a shame because I would love to get unloaded today so that we can get moving towards a reload. But it looks like we'll be unloading first thing tomorrow morning and then heading towards a reload. So. It is what it is. Let's get her done today. We're in Menominee, Wisconsin at the rest area in the back here. Feels like a beautiful day to be a truck driver. Got the sun shining. Nice and warm, it was hot all night. I had to idle the truck a little bit, a little bit, because it was so hot, like it felt like, and it's humid. Felt like I was drinking the air and Diesel was having a pretty hard time in the heat, so. Well, I threw on the air conditioning and that was that. It is July after all, so it is the hot season. During the hot season and the cold season in winter is when you would idle your truck more. Try to, I try to reduce it and make it as little as possible, but you know, at the same time, you gotta make sure that you're well rested so that you're not a danger on the road. If you're not getting your sleep, it can get very dangerous very fast. And if it's so hot that I'm sweating buckets, I, I won't get a good sleep, so. You sort of got to weigh your options and just bite that bullet some nights. I want to stop at a Walmart today too. I want to get some good food, some healthier food than what I've been eating. Because I've been getting a little bigger again. I know that uh, when Britt was with me, we ate out uh, a lot more than I usually do, but that's because, you know, it was special that she was along, that the whole family was along. So it was a special special occasion so we ate out a little bit more but uh, now it's time to uh, really focus on my diet that I wanted to be focused on at the beginning of summer already and beginning of spring it's it's already summer the year's half over it's time to start getting out there getting my walks in every day that year I was focused and I lost what like 30 30 pounds something like that just from eating properly and walking every day. And I can do it again, I can do it again. Just gotta, like I said, just gotta focus. further but it's a bit better of a neighborhood in my opinion 
But Lake Station is practically right there where my customers is look right around the corner. I had a reload that I was gonna go pick up. I was actually really excited about it and it fell through. I had a reload uh, in Ohio and I haven't been to Ohio in a while. I don't get to go there that often anymore. So I was excited to go, but unfortunately the load fell through already, so I still have no reload. And if I don't have a reload by the end of today, which is in 15 minutes, uh, I won't bother showing up to deliver this until everyone gets to the office tomorrow morning. They're gonna get there probably around 8 a.m., so I'll get to my receiver around 7.30 so that or maybe even around 8 a.m. the same time, so that by the time I'm done unloading, they'll have had some time to settle into the office, get their computers fired up, start sniffing around for freight, and hopefully by like, I don't know, 9, 9.30, maybe they'll have found something for me. But if I go there right at 6 a.m., I'm guaranteed to just be sitting around wasting my e-log hours because no one's even in the office yet to, to sniff around for freight for me, right? One day, it's sort of like my dream. One day I'm sort of hoping to have my own running rights where, you know, I could have my own truck, my own trailer, my own unit, and I'd find my own freight. I don't really know much about that, so I'd have a lot to learn, and I don't know if it would benefit me because I don't have the, the, the sway of like a a bigger company to secure good paying loads. So I don't know if, it would, if I'd make more money doing that or not, but I mean, I'd get the whole thing then, right? I'd get the whole pie instead of someone else taking a cut out of my pie, right? So, I don't know. I like the whole idea of Uber Freight and that whole, whole thing, but Uber Freight doesn't operate in Canada yet. If they did, I would be interested in looking into it, possibly one day signing up with them if I ever had like my own trailer. I'd look into it, and one day I wanna have, like I was telling you in the other, uh, the other vlog the other day, I'd like to have drivers on my trucks. I'd like to have multiple trucks, and I'd like to maybe hire a couple of you guys. Maybe you guys wanna drive for me, I don't know. I'll definitely be advertising through my YouTube channel at that point because a lot of you are drivers or you're newer drivers, you're looking for people to hire you. Well, come work for me, why not? But there would be restrictions. I mean, you'd have to live in my general area or the routes, probably in Western Canada would be best, but even if you lived out in Ontario, even an American citizen, I'd have to look into if I could hire American citizens. It all depends if I have my own running rights, I could hire anyone from anywhere. All I gotta do is bring you a truck to drive and uh, hope that you're a good person and aren't going to abandon my truck in the middle of like Florida or something where I gotta go get it. I wouldn't like you very much if you did that to me, especially if I run such a small company. that cost me a lot of money. But it's something I'm looking, looking into in the next decade or so of doing. Quite a ways in the future, but. What do you guys think of that? Would you drive for me? By that time, I'll have, what, 15 years experience under my belt. Uh, I should know pretty much what I'm doing by then, right? Maybe. We're all learning every day. We'll see what happens. That's my plan, though. Eventually, I want to get to a point where uh, I have... I'd like to have, like, five trucks. Maybe ten. We'll see. Maybe it'll grow fast. Since I have an audience like you and a, a bit of a bigger driver pool, a bigger advertising platform than most recruiters have, maybe I'll find lots of drivers. I don't know, the, the problem is always finding good drivers, right? Good drivers, not just any drivers, good drivers. People who aren't gonna abuse my trucks and my equipment, people who are gonna take care of my stuff, people who are gonna work hard for me, people who are going to not leave me hanging, also people that I respect, you know? We'll see what happens. Life is exciting. You never know what's going to happen next. It's the very next morning. Alright, so we made it to Burns Harbor, Indiana. I went to uh, Lake Station Flying J first, but there was an accident out front of their building and everything was blocked off. 
so I had to come down here. So we're about 21 kilometers, or like 16 miles or so, 15 miles. From our delivery, we're gonna make our way over there now. We still don't have a reload, but the time is now about 8 a.m. So by the time I get unloaded, the office people should have arrived, settled into their chairs, turned on their computers, had their coffee, and possibly have found maybe some freight for me to pull. Really disappointed that that Ohio load fell through though. I was looking forward to going to Ohio. I haven't been there in ages. Ever since I've been on flatbed, I've been uh, I've had a much smaller region, but that's also because uh, you know uh, life changes happen. You know, I got married and I uh, wanted to be home a little more often than every three weeks. My average trip before I got on flatbeds when I was on vans was about you know two to three weeks, sometimes longer. Now that I'm on flatbed, my average trip is probably yeah, I don't know like four to ten days maybe longer sometimes so that's the main reason I switched over to flatbeds uh, there's also more money pulling flatbeds and then I bought this truck which is equipped for flatbeds so uh, may as well use it for flatbeds right so my GPS is trying to take me way around twice the distance to get to my customer I'm following Google hope I don't regret that. <laughs> Google says it's 22 minutes away. The GPS says it's like 45. Nope. Turn left onto North State Road 149 South. In this case, I think I probably arrived in the exact same amount of time as if I would have just gone way around on the freeway. But whatever. At least I didn't lose any time. I think I did save some time still. But as long as I saved a little bit of time where it stayed the same, I think it's success. Whoa, excuse me, excuse me. There you go, get out of my way. Good idea, good idea. Yeah, you sort of get to see the scenery here around, uh, I don't know what area this would be. This would be like the south shore of, uh, what lake is it? Oh, I always get the Great Lakes mixed up. The lake that Chicago is on, Lake Michigan? Lake Michigan? Lake Superior? No, not Lake Superior. Superior is a smaller one, right? My geography is kind of uh, rusty this morning, I guess. But we're on the south shore of the Great Lake, just south of Chicago and around the corner into Indiana. Nice area here, like, nice homes. You wouldn't suspect this just driving through on the interstate, but you come to the back roads here, it's like a nice little communities. Nice little old school farms, old school homes. A lot of people in this area though, a lot of people. There is no wilderness here. There is no, like in Canada when we say the bush, there is no bush here. There is no forest. There's people everywhere. I wonder where all the wildlife goes then, right? There's obviously no real wildlife around here. Like, I'm sure at one point there was. I wonder where it all, I bet it all went up to Canada. That's why we got so much wildlife up there. I'm fine with that. The deer come on our property and mow my lawn for me all the time. What's this, Wheeler? Wheeler, Indiana. Nice little town here. Old areas in North American standards. Old areas. Look at that building. Need a little bit of a paint job, but still works. That one, oh, that one's got vines growing all the way up it. That's cool. Incognito. I'm guessing all these homes were built before the invention of cars. So they're pretty close to the road and close together. fun and no break from it right into agriculture <laughs> the only way to get to my customers by going right through downtown Hobart Indiana are any of you from here any of you been here pretty 
cool, but they've got to come up with a better way of getting trucks into their industrial area here. <laughs> I think my customer is a little outside in an industrial area. This is an old town, so the zones don't always make sense. Ginter Reality, or Ginter Realty, I mean. <laughs> That's a Mennonite name. Got Mennonites around here? Hey, my people. There's so a playground over here, playground there. This lumber yard is in a residential zone, literally. Houses there, the street here, there's no way trucks can get in here without running the curbs. And it's right here in the middle of a residential zone. I've never seen it this bad before. Like sometimes they're sort of like on the edge of a residential zone. And you're like, oh wow, that's a little close to people's homes. This is right in the heart of an old residential zone. Hazel, isn't that weird? Like, I missed it the first time because I thought it was a house. And I had to go 20 minutes around on truck on, on roads that did not look like truck roads. Apparently they're truck roads. I don't know. It didn't say either way. So I came back around here again, got in here, and now there's this guy in front of me who's, who's unloading first. But we shouldn't be in here. This is not a truck area. Man, I... Like, I can imagine the homes around here must complain about having a business in the middle of their neighborhood. I mean, I guess what can they do, right? If the town says it's okay, it's okay. Huh. Strangest thing. Strangest thing. Now they're unloading that guy there. But anyways, guys, uh, i got to end this here. Because we got to start tomorrow's video. I have a reload now, apparently. Just got sent through to me. Oh no, just they need my month monthly maintenance report. Okay. Uh, apparently I'm going to Joliet, Illinois from here to pick up a load that needs to be tarped. I have a feeling it's gonna be that styrofoam insulation. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, Joliet, Illinois is Joliet, Illinois is Oh, it's only 78 kilometers or 45 miles away. And I gotta be there in uh, two and a half hours. That's why, because they called me like, hey, can you make it? Can you make it? I'm like, I don't know, where is that? Man, I don't know, uh, can you make it by 11.30? That's a lot of time, right? It might be, uh, where is it? Okay, you can make it, yeah, yeah, we'll send, we'll send it through. Wait, 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 where is it? <laughs> they didn't tell me where it is. I've heard the name Joliet, Illinois before. It sounds familiar, but from where I am right now, I didn't know how far away it was, right? I had the headset on, I was driving. I'm glad I approved, I, I'm glad I accepted it. I was like, yeah, yeah, just send it through then. If you think I can make it, just send it through. And uh, uh, just found out now it's an hour away. So as long as I get unloaded here in a decent time, I can make it there. I just gotta get my information for this load. Hmm. 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 I guess we'll be continuing that in tomorrow's video though. So tune in tomorrow to see what we're picking up and where it's going. I have no idea where it's going. I don't know where I'm picking up. I don't know what I'm picking up. I just know I'm supposed to go to Joliet. So tune in tomorrow and we'll figure it out together. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to hit the likes button on the YouTube page or on BitChute, wherever you're watching this. Uh, subscribe either on BitChute or on YouTube, wherever you're watching this. I have daily videos. And uh, if you are finding me for the first time on BitChute right now, my main channel is over on YouTube at Trucker Josh Vlogs. Go and check me out there as well. It's on, it's on both sites. Talk to you tomorrow. Hi, my name's... Ken, I'm from Traverse City, Michigan, and you're watching TKV.